Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know what? Hmm. Here's revolutionary news right here. Okay. Marriage is freaking hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been married for 30 years. Plus. I've been married for 35 years. And I did it the hard way. Two women. Right. <laughs> or is that the easier way? So the question know. begs, Ronnie, can you just plain get tired of the other person you're married to? We're going to talk about that on this episode of Men Are So Married. All right, smart. I hate you. I love you. I hate that I love you. Uh, you know, after all, the saying there's a fine line between love and hate is well known for a reason. In fact, recently, a group of a dozen basically happy married women were asked if they ever hated their husbands. Without hesitation, almost every hand shot up in the air like, obviously, yeah. said my friend sitting next to me. But why do people sometimes feel this way? And if it's normal, what can be done about it? Well, here's some relationship advice that we've gotten from experts suggesting if you currently resent or even feel like you hate your husband, especially if you want to restore your marriage, here are some things. So number one, okay, it's normal to hate your husband's guts. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah. Yep. Now I do. Yeah, you do. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the word hate. Just okay. because you say it doesn't mean you actually mean it. Mm -hmm. Relationship uh, expert Dr. Juliana Morris says in her practice, couples often use the word hate to make an exaggerated point about someone or something that they find a little bit beyond irritating. I hate when you do that. <laughs> it's very normal to have feelings of deep annoyance, she says, if you spend a lot of time with someone, especially as intimately as living together, you learn all their idiosyncrasies. True hate, however, is a major red flag. More on that a little bit later. Okay, great. Sometimes hating your spouse is even a good thing. Oh. If you never feel the urge to take his smelly, sweaty gym clothes that he leaves on the bathroom floor every morning and shove them where the <laughs> sun don't shine, <laughs> when the fit hits the shan, <laughs> then you're a legit Zen master and consider yourself lucky. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, some couples are so disconnected, they don't even spend enough time with each other to get annoyed. Yeah, if that sounds familiar, take it as a sign that you need to spend more time and make some quality time together, even if it means sometimes arguing a little bit. Uh, relationship expert Marla... Uh, Mattinson says, if you don't go through periods of annoyance and even disgust towards your partner, you haven't broken through the superficial barrier and explored the dark crevices that make up the whole person. Yeah, you know, that's kind of, it, it kind of lends itself to the whole uh, honeymoon phase. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, in a new relationship, everything is so special. Oh, boy. And the way that they scratch their ear is so cute. And the way they lay on the couch and try to disguise a fart. Trust me, that wears off really quick. So where where do these ugly feelings come from, Ronnie? According to this expert, when you feel like you hate your spouse, you may actually be feeling something else. Hurt, disappointment, rejection, resentfulness. But those aren't identifying it correctly. Once you realize the root of the emotion, it is easier to fix. Uh, so let's say you're thinking, I hate you, you're such a slob. You're reading my mind, Ronnie. <laughs> what you may actually be feeling is disappointment that he's not pulling his weight with the chores. Uh -huh. uh, to try to fix it, try saying, I would love for all the dirty clothes to be in the laundry basket. And kind of see that avoids any negativity there. I didn't hear anything of what you just said. <laughs> Nothing. Then let him know that you'd like that to change. Uh -huh. For example, I would feel a lot less resentful and would be less cranky if you'd help remove that obstacle from my day. Yeah, for one day she's going to be less cranky. <laughs> or even not like an hour. Yeah. Insight into where the root of the hate comes from will help you make changes for a more fulfilling relationship. 
Well, you should try to focus on the positive, friends. Old habits die hard. But Kelly Kitley says, whoever she is, says that there are a few things that couples can do to help mellow that hateful feeling when they arise. One way is to restructure your thoughts. Instead of ob obsessing about what you are hating, make a list of what he or she has done right. This is called actively practicing gratitude. Ooh. Don't have time. Yeah. Sorry. Sounds a little complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this next one is put something exciting on the calendar. Uh, now that I, I I can relate to this. I did that yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, I went and saw a Led Zeppelin tribute band with some of my friends. Well, there you go. <laughs> Didn't take my wife. Yeah. But, and, yeah. Well, so it was. It was exciting. Uh, she says also to plan something to look forward to, like a couple's getaway or a night out doing something you both enjoy, like mm -hmm. listening to live music, thank you, yeah. or going to a comedy club. Spending uninterrupted time together outside of your t routine will give you the opportunity to reconnect. And lastly, there's always good old makeup sex. Oh, is there anything better than that? Uh, sex helps ease any built-up tension with a chemical release an endorphin rush. All right, today we're talking about hating your spouse. Is it normal? We've shared with you some of the concepts and things you should try to put into practice. We wrap up with this today. Consider therapy. You know what I'll tell you, I'm gonna read the info first and then, and then we'll talk about it. Most of the time, feelings of hate pass in a relatively short period of time and other feelings take their place. But what if they don't? If you find that hating your spouse is a sustained state, the two of you should seek help to work through your issues. There's often a feeling of being trapped with someone you don't like. That trapped, hopeless, helpless feeling breeds resentment, anger, and hate. Talking through your issues with a trusted counselor or therapist can help you figure out whether the relationship can be mended or whether it's time to go separate ways. Mm. Um, been married twice. Right. The first time for eight years. Uh, saw a marriage therapist towards the end. And honestly, marriage therapists are not fire extinguishers. No. No, they're fire preventers. So there's such a thing as going too late. Right. Uh, once it gets to the past that boiling point, um, there probably isn't going any back. And it would take a great deal of work to try to um, right the right the ship. I saw, I mean, working in law enforcement, of course, I saw a lot of marital problems mm -hmm. uh, to where, you know, there's, there's instances where somebody's got to go to jail because of the extreme marital problems. Mm -hmm. And in those cases... That probably should never be salvaged. Uh, I mean, that's that's beyond repair in many, many instances. Uh, what we love to go to are the ones that, hey, this is a this is a misunderstanding or this is a mistake on somebody's part. Uh, somebody didn't take into account your your feelings, and hey, that can all be corrected. And those are good. That's a, that's a good time to go see a therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, before before somebody goes to jail, that's, yeah. that's a good enough time. And, you know, if there's violence of any, any element, um, it's it's time to move on. Yeah. And there's no question. There's no going back. No. Um, and I imagine you've gone to calls, Ronnie, where something has happened between two people and you go to hail, uh, haul one of them away to jail, and the other one probably fights you to stop you from doing it. Right. You know, why? Yep. That's because he's the bread earner and, uh -huh. yeah, concerned about how, mm -hmm. how she's going to make the household work with him in jail for a week or whatever. The other interesting thing that I've seen is I've gone to these calls where husband and wife fighting need law enforcement to, you know, to kind of pick up pieces a little bit and, and make it better. And I go there and I recognize the woman, but not the man. Wow. And so uh, as we separate him, when we start talking, I go, I know I've, I know I've talked with you before. Uh, oh yeah, this is a different, 
This is a different guy. So it's possible that some women have the uncanny ability to push a guy's buttons. Okay. A guy who typically couldn't get flustered gets flustered by this particular woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and not saying maybe, man, maybe she just has a, a knack of picking the wrong Bingo. types of guys. That's what I was going to say. It's all about choices. Uh, and that could be too. And so, maybe she's repeating a trend. Yep. Yeah. So hard to say, but uh, it is. It seems like if you are prone to one particular type of guy, you might be setting yourself up for a lifetime of disappointment. Uh, you know, here's a good gauge for that too. Uh, if you start going through your relationship past, and each time the relationship breaks up, if it's heated, yeah, you know, if you find that you're repeating yourself, well, with Bob we had this problem, yeah, and then with Steve we had this problem. Maybe it's not Bob and Steve. <laughs> when she says it's not you, it's, it's me. <laughs> She's right. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. Get yeah. out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And last but not least today, look. No one ever said marriage was going to be easy. Oh, boy. And, no. and it isn't. No. And, and I don't care. You may have the greatest marriage in the world. You may be married a year. Or you may be married 30 years like us. Um, at some point, what you need to do is have your own interests. Right. If you hope to have a long-term relationship, and it's based on the two of you being together at all times, uh, you're going to hit the wall at some point, I'm telling you. If you don't have your own friends, your own interests, in addition to things that you can do together, uh, forget it. It ain't going to work. It just can't. Uh, I would think the percentage of that working is very, very low, less than 5%. So don't, that's my my marriage advice. Don't lose your individuality. Yep. Okay. Remember to keep your yourself and your friends. And if, you're per, if your significant other is not allowing you to have friends, number one, <laughs> he shouldn't be allowing you to do anything or she. Uh, and number two, don't put up with that. Yeah. You know, um, don't lose sight of who you are as an individual. It's so important and lends itself to successful relationships. Yeah. I'm done. I'm off the soapbox. You want to add anything? Well, I will say that my in-laws are very rarely more than six feet from each other. And you know what? They've been married uh, 60 plus years. Mm. So they fall on that that minuscule. Less than 5%. Yeah, right? that little set uh, percentage of people where it works. You know, I don't make up these statistics. <laughs> I just believe them to be true. <laughs> I hope you do too. Five out of four dentists agree. If you made it this far in our video, thank you very much. You're a champ. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate your watching. Thank you very much. Give the sucker a like. And while you're at it, come on, Skippy. What the hell? Subscribe to our channel. Yeah. The doesn't, Gallagher Entertainment Network. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. It helps us too. We'd yeah. appreciate it. And you know what else? Share. Share with your friends, share with your family, share, share with your business compadres. Uh, let people know about the show, and we'll continue bringing you fun and interesting content on our program. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ronnie. And you know that this has been another episode of Men Are So Smart.